I was sent this turquoise from Turquoise Moose, and I'm going to be using them to make this matching set of jewelry. So a necklace, ring, and matching earrings. So let's get started. For the most part, I'm going to be using recycled sterling silver that I made into wire and sheet metal on my mill. But when it comes to the bezel, I'm going to be using some fine silver due to it being easier to bend and a lot softer, so it's easier to mold over your stone. And as you can see, it's very simple to make the bezel for the stone, just wrapping it around it, and then marking where the ends meet and cutting it off. So not all bezel wires are the right size for every stone. So you might have to trim them and make sure that the bezel comes up just barely over the dome of the cabochon or stone you're working with. This is easy enough to do using some calipers to measure your stone, mark it out on your metal, and then cut it out with some shears. Once you have everything to your liking, you're going to need to make your bezel ends as flat as possible. A miter cutting vise comes in really handy for this. When it comes to soldering your bezel shut, you always want to use hard solder for this. This is because it melts at the highest temperature, and when we solder this onto the back plate, it won't melt as we're putting it on. So with that said, I'm going to use some handy flux to flux the joint. I'm going to be using my Smith's Little Torch, which happens to have an oxygen acetylene setup. I'm going to be using a titanium solder pick to pick up our solder and place it onto our bezel. Also, keep in mind, if you're new to this, make sure to order some extra materials because these bezels are very thin and they're very easy to melt, and you probably will melt it the first couple times. Feel free to ask me how I know. But anyways, once you have successfully soldered it shut, you need to quench this so you can handle it and test fit it onto your stone to make sure that it all lines up perfectly. From the heating process, the bezel can deform a little bit and it might be a little tight going on, but it should go on and form to the stone. Now that I have all my bezels made and fitted to my stones, I need to put them onto a backing plate. I'm going to need to cut these into smaller pieces, so I'm going to make some lines as cutting guides. So you can use a jeweler saw to cut through this to get them to the right sizes. I'm just going to be using my benchtop shear. It just makes things a lot faster and it makes perfectly straight lines. So with these all cut out, I'm going to put some flux on them and the bezels themselves and solder everything down. But before placing the solder, make sure to dry out all your flux. It makes it a lot easier to place everything and it makes it so it doesn't bounce around when everything's heating up. I'm going to use medium solder for this and I'm going to place it touching the wall of the bezel and the base plate floor. So when it comes to heating, I actually heat them from underneath, and I make sure to use a heavy gauge mesh screen to do this. And if you use a thinner gauge, you usually melt the screen before you'll actually solder anything. So I just kind of move my flame around the back of the piece, evenly heating it, because if I keep it in one spot for too long, it'll just melt a hole through it. As I'm doing this, you can see that the flux is reacting and changing and bubbling up, and then it'll kind of deflate and turn to a glassy look. And this is when your solder is about to flow. At this point, I will start just tracing where the bezel is on the back side and wait for the solder to flow and then kind of chase it around the outside because it kind of follows wherever the hottest point is. And this should give you a perfect solder joint with no gaps. And always check your work to make sure that there aren't any visible gaps that you missed when you were soldering it. If there are, you can always just pickle this and redo the process until they're filled. I have all four of the bezels completely soldered, and they're all dirty as you can see. I need to throw them into a pickling solution to get them all cleaned up, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically just an acid that will eat away the remaining flux that's on here, and any oxidation just cleaning up the metal. Now I need to check if the stone is going to fit into the bezel still, and to do this without it getting stuck, I'm going to use just a little bit of dental floss. And all you have to do is lay it across the bezel itself and put the stone on top of it. This way you can make sure that your bezel is the right size and there's no problems, and you can still take your stone out. Seeing that the stone is actually pretty snug in there, you wouldn't be able to get this out without damaging your bezel. So this is why you use the string. And I made sure to do this with all the bezels I just made. So with the backing plate on here, I can mark in some guidelines for sawing this piece out into the shape I need. It's going to be a very simple design where I just cut along the bezel itself and then straight up to the top so I have some area to solder more pieces onto. I do try to leave a little bit of a gap between the actual bezel and where I'm cutting so I don't accidentally hit the bezel and leave saw marks in it because I can go back later and use a file and clean up the edges. So with this particular piece it has that flat area that I can actually clamp a ring clamp onto and file this really easily. And this allows me to make quick work of all these pieces. 
So with all of them cleaned up, there is a bit more that needs to be cleaned before we can start soldering anything else on, and that is the actual solder joint on the bezels. So we just need to sand this down and make it disappear, just like on this one. And the reason why I didn't do this right when I made the bezel is these are very thin, and trying to sand this deforms them, and I didn't want to deal with that, so I'm doing it now. To do this, I'm going to be using this weird little sanding stick. It works perfectly for areas like this, or other small little areas you don't have much room in. You can also use a file to do this, but whatever you use, make sure that you keep your stone in the bezel to support it so you don't accidentally bend it down with the pressure of sanding it. You might also notice that my bezel is not 100% level when it comes together, and you can easily sand this down at any point before you actually set your stone into it. And there we go, all clean. Now I need to make all the hinges for the top parts of the bezels. So these are pretty easy to make. I'm going to be using some 20 gauge sheet metal that's cut to about 5.5 millimeters wide. So I'm just going to wrap it around the smallest part of the baling pliers, which is about two and a half millimeters. And you should end up with something like this. And once I have that, I can cut off the excess, and then I can file down the edges to flatten everything out and the underside that's going to be soldered shut. When it comes to soldering them, I'm just going to flux the bottom of them and then pick solder every single one of them with medium solder. So to solder these in the place where I need them, they need supports because they'll just fall off otherwise and I don't want them to get stuck to the support material, so you can use whiteout, and it'll make it so nothing will stick to whatever has the whiteout on it. As for the support piece, I'm actually going to be using one of the cutoff pieces from the back plate, so it's exactly the same size and everything lines up. All I need to do now is flux my pieces and place them, heat the piece a little bit to dry out all the flux, and then add my little pieces of medium solder to it and heat it from the underside like I did before until all the solder flows. Once all that's done, you should be able to separate the piece from the supporting piece due to the whiteout being there, and then this needs to go into the pickling solution to be cleaned off. With all the hinges on, I need to kind of even them out with a file because you can see that they're not 100% aligned with one another, and I'm going to kind of arc them across. The next thing I need to make is the hanging wire that's going to go around the outside of all of these pieces. Similar to how I made the bezel, I'm just going to use the actual piece to help shape this around it. I'm just going to clip off one side and I'll end up with a U shape. And I made sure that it is a little bit taller than the actual piece so I have material to work with and so it can hang. So I'm going to align this with our piece making sure that there's a small gap between it and make a mark at the center point of the hinges on both sides. So this might seem counterintuitive, but I'm going to actually flatten this out now and then hammer down the ends. I'm going to do all this on a bench block using a rawhide mallet so I'm not marring up my metal. After all of that hammering, I'm going to have to anneal the piece, seeing that it's going to be work hardened from all the hammering, and I'm going to need to form it back into the U shape again. This is going to be its final shape, so I need to make sure that the piece is completely straight, so I'm just going to hit it with a rawhide mallet to straighten it out. So with that done and everything to my liking, I can finally mark out where I'm going to be drilling the holes through this. So typically you would use a drill bit to drill a hole through this, but I didn't have any in the right size, they're either way too small or way too big. So I'm using a ball burr to do this, and I'm making sure to just keep the ball burr lubricated so I don't burn out the teeth on it. So with holes through both sides, I can now put this together and see how well it fits, and if there's any binding points or anything weird on it before finishing it up. And from the looks of it, it looks like everything went together fine. So now all I need to do is kind of flare out those top tabs to get the arc that I was going for and trim them down with some clippers. So up to this point, all of these were pretty much done exactly the same. This is where they're going to kind of veer off into their own individual pieces. But I didn't know which one to start with, so I put a poll on my community tab on my channel, and you guys said that I should do the ring first. So for the ring, I'm going to put a little bit of a stop on it so the dangly part of the band isn't just flopping around, and it should just keep it in place, but it will be just lightly floating inside of everything, so it'll still jingle around. When it comes to the actual band for this, I'm going to be using a double shank, which is just going to consist of two pieces of half round silver wire that I need to anneal before bending them. I'm going to use a ring bender to get them to their proper shape, but if you don't have one, don't worry, you can just use a mandrel and a rawhide mallet to do the same thing. This ring is going to be a size 9, and if you don't already know how to do the math to figure out how long your metal needs to be, I'll put the math on the screen now. It's very simple and it works for just about anything. Now that I have them roughly the right shape, I'm going to hammer them down a little bit to make sure that the connection point for the solder joint is 100% flush. And you might have to adjust them so there's no gap. And then I just pick solder them using some hard silver solder. 
The solder joint doesn't have to be perfect here, it's just here to keep the ring in the right size as we do more work, and then we're just going to be cutting this off. I'm going to use my ring stretcher to make the ring perfectly round and make sure that it is exactly a size 9, and I'll do this to both of them. Then using some crosslock tweezers, I'm going to hold them in place and solder just the bottom part of them together. And this is just one piece of medium solder. Once you get them soldered together, you need to wedge them apart. You can use a knife like I am or whatever really fits in here and will get you the desired look. So at this point, I'm going to be cutting some of the top area off where we soldered the rings together originally. And we want more of a C shape and not like a half circle. And you want to make sure things are even on both sides so it doesn't look lopsided. And when you're cutting them out, make sure you're using a jeweler saw. You don't want to use any type of shears. It will deform the piece because it crushes to cut instead of actually sawing them. So the last thing I need to do before I can actually solder everything together is make a flat spot on the top of this so it will actually join up with the other piece and have a really strong joint. I'm doing this just with a hand file onto a flat backed mandrel. So like any time you're going to be soldering, you flux your piece first and then I'm going to set my ring shank where I want it to be and then preheat the flux so everything dries out and everything stays in place. I'm going to be placing some easy silver solder for this at the four points where it's connecting and keep an eye on it and make sure that your solder is flowing underneath the piece and not up onto a band like mine did. If this does happen you can easily just grab another piece of solder and put it there and it should flow underneath everything. So after all that and pickling it you can try it on or put it on your ring sizer to see if everything matches up right. But you might notice that the bar is falling out of the top of the piece and this is because I haven't set it yet and that's what we're going to do now. So you don't have to use flux for this part but I like to and you just take your torch and heat the tip of it until it balls up. And once you have the one end balled up you can put everything back together and do the other end on the piece. Just make sure you don't have any stones in this when doing it because you can damage them from the heat. And this will be the same process I used on all of the pieces I just made but I'll just trim the wire down so it's the right size before melting it. So next up is the necklace, and I need to put a ring on this real quick so you have something to actually hang it from. I'm going to use the same technique I used before, but I'll use two pieces of metal to hold up my ring with the little bit of whiteout on them and solder this ring on. And this is pretty much what I'm going to do on the earrings as well. For the chain part of this, I'm going to need a lot of jump rings, so I'm just going to be using my jump ring maker. You can just make a coil like this and cut it out using a saw, and it will work pretty much the same. This is just much faster, and if I'm making one or two jump rings, I just do it that way, but since I need to make so many, I'll be using the jump ring maker. This is a pretty simple setup that you just put your coil into, put some cut lube onto it, and clamp it down. You need a flex shaft to use with this, and it has a saw blade, and it just cuts through everything real quick. And there we go, I have a bunch of perfectly cut rings in a couple seconds. The rings are just one part of the chain, the other part is going to be these 25mm pieces of wire that I'm going to cut out. So with that wire, I'm going to be hammering down the ends of them to make them wider and so I can put the jump rings through them. This will leave some sharp edges on them, so I'm going to file those until they're round. And then once I have that to my liking, I'm going to drill some pilot holes with a small drill bit and then use the ball burr from before to make the holes big enough for the jump rings to actually go through. So you should end up with something like this, but you can change the look of these to whatever you'd like, from being completely clean and polished to having different hammered textures. But whatever you do, make sure you keep in mind that you're going to be making a lot of them. I'm going to make 20 of these in total. With all of that done, I could start assembling the chain now. I just need to open up a jump ring, put two of the bars into it, and then close the jump ring, and continue until I have a full chain. So there we go, but there's no way to attach them, so let's fix that. So to do this, I just need a larger jump ring, two of the smaller jump rings that we've already made, and a length of wire. On the larger ring, I'm going to file down a flat spot where the ring meets itself and where the solder joint would be. And on the smaller rings, I'm going to do it on the opposite side of where the opening is. And then all I need to do is solder the larger ring to one of the smaller rings and then one of the other smaller rings to a flat bar. The one with the flat bar, I'm going to melt the ends of it to kind of match with the pieces. And with that done, you can open up the jump rings you put onto them and put them onto your chain. And this is a very quick and easy clasp. And with that done, that's pretty much your entire chain done. So if you have larger jump rings, kind of like these ones, you don't have to go through and solder them all, but I'm going to because it's good practice and it'd make it last longer. 
But anyways, on to the easiest of all of them, the earring wires. I'm just going to melt a small ball on the end of both of them, and then I'm going to shape them using my bale pliers. So when it comes to shaping these, it doesn't really matter what you shape them like, as long as there is no sharp edges, along with a place to hang your actual earring, and you're going to be able to reproduce this for the other side. Oh, and make sure you use a wire that is not too thick. This is 0.8 millimeters, because remember, it still has to go through an ear. I'm just going to clip off the excess, and then use a ball burr to make the end of this round, so it won't hurt anyone when it's going through their ear. And for a final little touch, I'm going to solder the loop shut, so these can never fall off. So now that all the pieces are completely done, I'm going to put a patina on them using some hot water and liver of sulfur. This will turn all of this over a dark black, and I'll leave it in here for about half an hour to an hour, so it really sets in. So my end goal for all these pieces is to have a worn vintage look, so it has really dark patina in the lower spots, and some polished smooth edges. Kind of like these have been worn a lot. So to achieve this, and to work harder in the pieces, I'm going to throw them into a tumbler with some steel shot for about 8 hours. So after all that time in the tumbler, look how shiny and dark these are now. It's finally time to set the stones in these, and there's a ton of options for holding your pieces and for actually setting the bezels. From different ring clamps, to pitch, to different types of thermal plastic. Basically use whatever gets the job done. There's lots of options in your different burnishers and bezel pushers, and you might even find wooden dowels to be helpful with this. So when it comes to setting the bezels, this does take a bit of practice and time to get right, and I'm not going to go over this in full detail in this video. I have other videos that explain it that I'll have linked in the description or the top card right now. But just to sum it up, you're basically folding the edges of your bezel over your stone and making it all completely flush all the way around. So after all that, I'm going to polish out any tooling marks, and polish off any of the black that is in high spots so it'll have a nice contrast. And after all this work, here are the final pieces. So you might notice that the ring is a little bit different due to it missing the little front thing. Well, that kind of got ripped off when I was polishing when it got stuck in the wheel. And because we already have a stone in this, I can't solder it back on, so I just cleaned up the area and made do. And honestly, I kind of like it better like this, seeing that it matches with everything else, and it's more of a fidget ring now. When it comes to the earrings, I think they came out exactly how I imagined them, and they're very dangly. And I feel the same about the necklace. Besides, the chain is a lot better than I thought it was going to come out. So thank you Turquoise Moose for sending out these stones. If you're looking for any turquoise to use in your work, I highly suggest checking out their website. They were also nice enough to give me a coupon code for my viewers. Just head down to the description of this video to find the coupon code and a link to their website. And this also helps support my channel. Along with that, I will have links to all the tools and materials I used in this video. So if you're looking for anything I used, it will all be down there. Also, thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful whatsoever, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one or to be notified when I post new videos. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!